boxes to builds number 14. We didn't do 13, and we know why. So we're going to do 14. Let's see what's in the box. Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McCleary here, six time top 100 best golf club fitter with Golf Digest. And this is a channel where you can learn about club repairs, club fittings, club opinions, reviews. Also, your scores can go low. So, what's in the box? I don't know yet. We're going to find out. But it's in a very familiar, a very familiar box. Look at that guy. So, no, it's probably not from there. But it's, uh, but they, that's what they ship it in. So, let's take a look at what's in the box. Oh, I forgot, hold on. In order to open the box, my most favorite Peter McKinnon imitation box opening knife. Let's go to the bench. Oh. Okay, we've opened it already from the bottom. Let's see what we've got. Okay. Better fit, lower scores. That sounds like me. All right. Oh, it's a boxes to builds, boxes to builds. Okay. <laughs> Make sure we ain't got nothing in there. Okay, nothing there. Sorry, dude, you gotta go. All right, boxes from Minnesota, Duluth, Minnesota, as a matter of fact. Let's see what we got. Let's see. All right, here we go. What are we seeing? We got some grips. Grips, that's pretty good, right? Grip, 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 grip. Looks like we got some Golf Pride Tour Velvet Standards. That's good. Quite a little quality little grip. What else we got? It would appear that I've got three. Project X 6.5. And they are wrapped up good. Let's see if we can't take them out. All right, so three Project X 6.5s. We're getting serious. Let's get rid of these. All right, so what are we replacing? All right, we got some Project Xs in something. Look short, so they might be wedges. Heck, they're taped to O. Jaws, these are the MD5s, okay. With 6.0s in them. And it is a 50. All right. Well, that's the box part. Let's see what he wants done. <laughs> All right. It's from Dan. All right. He wants the Project X taper tip in there. Tour Velvet 58 round. All right, so Dan, he says, we got the Jaws MD5s, we saw those. The Project X taper tip shafts, got those. And the Golf Pride 58s, and we'll, these guys, and we'll talk about that. And Ferrell's all black 875, prefer new flares to the ones currently not a huge fan of the silver ring around them. Oh, they do have a silver ring around them. Okay. The 
875 is about 5 8 of an inch. We're going to go kind of with the with some of the original stuff. We'll see what happens there. All right, so he wants the specs, 50, 56, all 62 degree lie angles, different playing lengths. He wants the logo down. Uh, and he wants the grips logo down. One side and uh, one layer of tape. Swing weight based on components probably between D3 and D5. So we're taking them apart and putting them back together. So let's talk about these guys. The Jaws, right? MD5s. Uh, I like these. These are actually really great wedges. The, the S grind, which is on all of them. They're all S grinds. All right, the S grind actually stands for the standard grind. And as we've talked in other wedge, wedge videos before, the, it, there's not a whole lot going on here. It's basically your standard grind. Now on this one, if we look, there is just a slight, what I would call a radius. It's more radius here, and then it kind of flattens out, okay? So what do they do here? <clears throat> well, if you look, if you look at what they've done, there's a lot of weight going up here. And it's split by that little decorative uh, groove, we'll say. And then some weight's been removed at the bottom. Why do they do that? Well, in order to move weight around so they can play with the center of gravity, so they can uh, make the shots the way they want them to be with the wedges. Sometimes they want them higher, sometimes they want them more controlled, and that's how they're going to move the weight around. Okay. So that's the... That's the idea of the jaws. Now there's also uh, some grooving that goes on in these, and, and some of the grooves will change as the as the loft goes up. At least they used to. Now this one looks pretty good shape. Nice painted surface. Uh, it's not as aggressive as one would think, but if we go into another one, yeah, you get to see it a little bit better here. And, and what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can get in there close. I'll try and make it bigger, but you can see more of a milling pattern. And, and so what they've done is on the lower end, the 50, we'll call it, is more iron-like. So there's not a whole lot of massive spin on the face because you really don't want a lot of, lot of massive spin on the face of that one. However, in the 60, which you just saw in the 56, they do have that more of a milling pattern. So that's what that's for. All right, so we're gonna put the, the 58 in there. So let's talk about that. Now, why am I calling it a 58? So Golf Pride is going to send you some tour velvets and good, good grip. I mean, everybody's had them and they will come in a 60 or a 58. And how can you tell? And I would love to be able to show you. Let's see if I can do it. You got to roll. <laughs> you got to roll this thing over. There we go. Let's see if we can make it happen. I'm getting close. Getting close. Ah. There we go. Okay. I'm going to keep it down there. Boy, I'm wrestling this thing good. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see it, but inside in here inside that ring right there it gives you a code and it starts with an m it might be an m58 m60 that is the core size that means that if you put it over a 60 if you take a 58 and you put it over a 60 but it's going to feel bigger because this core is smaller so you just made it a slightly bigger grip which some folks like if it says 60 and you put it on a 60 butt, then, or a 600 butt as the case may be, then it's going to be a, a men's standard. The M is for men's. Now it also ends in R, right? And for, and for golf pride, R means round. Okay, it means round. Yep. How do you check? You look right up in here and you look through and you can see the light. And if it, and if it had a rib, there would be a flat spot on the bottom. And also, it wouldn't have the R after it, so we got that. All right, so that's what they're talking about, so that's what we got to do. So now, the idea is, what are we going to talk about? 
Well, we talked about the grip. We talked about what we're going to put in. So let's talk about let's talk about assembly techniques. That'll work. That's a good one. Hold on. Let's talk about assemblies. Assembly techniques, there's always these different, you know, assembly, just like an assume, there is an ASS and a symbol. And because you can look like one if you don't put it together correctly, right? Whether it be in flex, swing weight, length, lie, loft, the whole nine yards. It, you know, you got to take time pride into the assembly of the club. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these guys apart. And so this is all going to be logo down. So this is going to be kind of your basic club assembly. Hey, there you go. Basic club assembly. Not too many, not too much in the way of big parts, that kind of thing. And we'll talk about that. So I'm going to take these things apart and we'll talk about what it takes to put them back together. So give me a few. So the first thing you got to do when you want to do some assemblies, you've got to prep the components to be glued. All right. So what does that mean? Well, when you're putting together, we'll just say an iron, you want to make sure that the hosel area is very, very clean. Now I use, I use a, uh, a drill and a brush. And you're like, oh, Jim, that's not common. Oh, yes, it is. You can get these kind. And basically, they're just brushes on handles that you can cut off, which I've done on this one for woods and for, and for irons. This one just happens to be special made. Yes, that's the special part of it, but you can get those. Now, I have these. Right? This is typically what I've used in the past. And what you do is you would really push it in there. Get a turn, pull it around, tap it out, and make it close. That's what I. That's the hand done for the uh, mechanical. And there you go. So we've done that. We've done that to all three. Now the next piece is, is is the end of the shaft. Now, what I do is I use my one by forty two uh, belt, and I use a hundred grit sandpaper. And that's to give it a, a, uh, a roughness that I want to see. And this is kind of what we're looking at right here. All right, you're just roughing it up. And again, I know, Jim, it's not a common place. You are correct. However, if you have a vise, right, you have a vise you know, and, a, and a shaft clamp, you can use one of these. I'll show you that. <clears throat> All right, so what you have is the tip of the shaft and what it is, just a piece of sandpaper. Now, this is emery cloth at a different grit, but it, it suits the purpose. What you can do is go get some 120 regular sandpaper and cut it, because you only want it about an inch wide because you're gonna give it the sandpaper technique and only go up a certain area to make that happen. And there you go, you got that. So then, take it the other side. There you go. And we have it. So 120 grit sandpaper, whether you use the belt or whether you use it like this, it comes out the same. Let's go back. All right, here we go. We're on the last wedge. We're gonna put a little bit of glue on it. 
roll this guy up there so it gets a lot of glue in there. Set this guy in there. Now we've got a little glue on the end. We cover about the first quarter, maybe third maximum, and then spin the shaft in. And then use this. And the whole idea is just getting a nice thin layer all the way around on both sides. And you can see it's there and there. All right, and then we line the MD5 and the Project X up. Get it nice and set it in there. And then we wipe off the excess. All right. Now is the last bit of pro tip. We use a little bit of tape. Get it up there, good to go. And we let it set. So let's talk about that. All right, so just like anything else, I've always said a trained monkey can always glue and stick something together. However, when you add in the little finer details, say weighing the stuff, making sure all the surfaces are, are, are abraded so that they will receive the epoxy well, making sure that you have a place to mix your glue. I use, I just cut up cardboard and two and a, two by two squares or three by three squares and then having some paper towels ready to wipe off access uh, that you can use that it just ready for me right uh, and knowing how to mix the epoxy the idea of mixing it for that long a time is to remove air bubbles we don't want any air bubbles and get a good mixture because if they're not together they tend to separate and that makes the head come off and we don't like that so you want to that's the reason why you stir it like that you do then you get it all together, wipe it down, make sure you got a good fit, and a little piece of tape to make sure you don't have any ferrule creep, and you have an assembled club. Now, that's just the assembly. We talked about the disassembly before, that's one step, making sure all the pieces, parts were clean, ready to accept all this stuff, measuring and making sure we, and assembling all the parts, and the last bit is finishing, right? Ferrule finishing, length loft lies, the whole nut gripping, the whole nine yards. But this was just about basic assembly and you saw with a vise bit, bit of sandpaper a uh, couple pieces of cardboard you can do all this stuff at the house so if you got any questions put them in the show notes and it will answer them as much as we can like and subscribe and that way you get more of the videos when they drop and finally let's see your scores go low